Hello, guys. My name is Andrei Karpushanak. I I am senior engineer in Motorola Solutions, Krakow, Poland. And today I'm going to show you how we can inject code into working, into running and drawing application on the fly. And let me show you how we can do that. Oh, sorry. Okay, so uh, just a little background. Uh, I'm working with Android also. Uh, I used to work with Spring Framework a lot, and uh, I am interested in uh, JVM and neighborhood. So, to start, uh, to start thinking how we can modify working code, imagine that what is our goal today? We have only 30 minutes, but what is our goal? Our goal is to, I don't want to touch source code at all, but I'd like to augment it with certain functionality. And by this augmenting, I mean that I can, I'd like to add certain functionality to, to existing code. To, to show you how I'm going to do this, I'd like to, I'd, I'd like to show how the flow of the execution of Android application looks like. So first step is that uh, we have source code, then we use uh, Java C, and it produces Java bytecode. Then second step, we use the X tool, it's here, and it produces Dalvik bytecode. Actually, it's not it's not uh, shown here that next step would be uh, zip this, this Dalvik bytecode and create APK file. This is b basically just uh, zipped Dalvik bytecode. And then we can run our application on the, on the real device and we can make uh, next social uh, network app or something uh, useful as well. Okay, so we see that we have certain steps here. And uh, at what step we are going to inject our code? Well, basically we have three, three places. First place is, is, is there. Second place is uh, Java source uh, code. But, uh, and third place is Java byte code. Well, like I said in, in the very beginning, I don't want to touch existing Java source code. So first, so not here, that's for sure. And we can modify Java bytecode or Dalvik bytecode. Well, having in mind that uh, Java platform is really mature platform ecosystem, we can look around and find that, that we have variety of tools available for us which actually could help us. And that's why I'm going, to, I'm going to use this step. And by this variety of tools, I mean that I'd like to use uh, AspectJ. AspectJ, this, uh, this is the most mature Java implementation of uh, Java of aspect-oriented programming. And what, how flow of the Java application looks like when we use AspectJ? Let me show you. Flow is similar, but instead of, instead of Java C, we use another compiler, AspectJ compiler, which actually takes existing uh, source code. We don't have to touch it. We can externally create some logic, and AspectJ compiler, actually what, what it does, it combines existing code and new code. What's the benefit? Well, uh, well aspect-oriented programming paradigm is a little bit different than uh, object-oriented programming, but I believe that knowing uh, both of them 
could benefit you as a programmer? I hope so. So, what's, what's the, what, what is the difference, for example, uh, OI, for example, OI, for example, object-oriented programming has a single responsibility principle, which means that you shall keep your class, and this class uh, shall do only one thing only. This is ideal world. Usually, it's not the case, because imagine logging, for example. Imagine that your method does something, and then you you would like to add some logging. That okay, this method takes certain parameters. I'd like to use logcat to see these parameters. And basically, you you combine two functionalities here: your your main your your main functionality, and logging functionality. And aspect oriented programming. Um, emphasize that you should break up your, your program into cohesive parts, into separate parts, and then Aspect J compiler just will combine these, these, these parts. And basically, as a, as a programmer, you don't, want to, you don't want to combine it by yourself. This is actually, in short, how, how it works in our case. So to, to summarize, to summarize, uh, we'll have Java source code. We don't want to touch it. Then we write a little bit of our custom code. We, we will use Aspect J compiler. We won't use uh, Java C compiler. It will, it will produce a modified bytecode. Then step is, is similar to, to any uh, to any actually flow which uh, you use when you develop in Android application. Okay, and let me show you. Let me show you it, it an, an example. Just let me go to slide one to not spoil another slides. To not spoil another slides. Okay, here I have a really simple application. Okay, it's not so bad. I have uh, only one method of the activity lifecycle, uncreate. And uh, this application doesn't do much, but it does enough to demonstrate the point. Uh, what, what it does, it, it, it creates list view, and uh, we provide list adapter to this list view with data. And this data is... Uh, is taken from uh, method get data. It's here. This is simple, simple, simple method, which takes parameters and returns array of of strings. How it works? Well, it just shows you versions of uh, of Android. And let me let me execute it. So, not much. Not much. We have list. So, and what is our goal? Our goal is to augment this application by our functionality. And let me start from the logger, because you can notice that that I don't use any logger here at all. And sometimes you would like to add uh, some some tracing functionality, and. What I'm, what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to create aspect and what it does. Well, what it does. It, uh, it, it executes before, like it said here, before each method, which takes one parameter, which is here, which uh, and name of the method doesn't matter because uh, we have a wildcard here. And this method returns array of strings. So I just identified what's the place if in my existing source code I'd like to augment with my functionality. And uh, like you probably noticed, the only method which qualifies is this method. And what I'm going to do here and please, please notice that I use a use key, key, keyword before here, which basically means that before every method which has uh, 
such pattern because we can define actually any pattern. We can define, for example, package wildcard, which means that we can execute or augment every method in every package. Maybe you can need that. So what we're going to do this? Not much. We are going to collect parameters of the, invoca of the invocation of this, of this method. We are going to collect the name of, of this method. And we are going to use uh, log cut. Actually, we are going to use logging mechanism provided by Android to put name of the, of the method with parameters. And please notice that I use uh, two sta uh, actually static this join point, which is provided by aspect J for me. Uh, let me execute it. I just removed abstract from there uh, to make it work. And I also created, I also created uh, certain filters. Here, this filter is empty now. I'm going to execute it. And this filter is simple. It filters all locked all lock messages by lock tag flogger. Let me execute it. And application is going to be executed as usual. Please notice that we didn't touch any, any of that, anything. But please notice that, that we have something here. And what we have, actually, not much. We have uh, name of the method, which we executed, and we collected parameters. Uh, in the logger, you could notice that uh, we can also use keyword after. It's actually the same as before. The only difference is that it is executed after method executes. Okay, so this is, uh, this is one use case, really simple one. Can we do more? Yeah, definitely we can do more. And uh, let me show you. Before proceeding to doing more, do we have any, any alternatives to this mechanism? Yeah, of course, we can just add more logs, right? So we can, we basically, uh, and I believe that every good application has to have really good logs because logs are really important. So we can just add uh, logging mechanism here and here. It would do the same. Okay, can we do more? Yeah, sure. Imagine that we would like to profile our code. So we have to uh, write profiler aspect. And what it does, please notice that I used a little bit different syntax here. And I'm going to uh, inject my logic into every method which, ex which, ex which is executed in this package and in my case, in every package of my application. And please also notice that I use keyword around here, which means that uh, I have more control now. By saying more control, I mean that I can add logic before, after, and also actually I'm in control of, of invocation of this method. And let me show you how it looks like. So this method, proceed, which is also provided by the aspect J, calls method, which is executed exactly here. And before proceed, we're going to start collecting time, in such case in, uh, in milliseconds. And in the very end, when method will be executed, we would like to collect end time and then put it to the lock. Let me execute it. Let me execute it, okay. And uh, I created another filter. This is profiler, it's here. It's defined in similar fashion like in logger. So I have, uh, by, I have uh, filtering by log tag profiler. And please notice that what I have here, I just collected time of the execution of all my methods. I don't execute too many methods in my application, only two. Uh, uncreate, this is life cycle methods of the activity. I have only one activity, it will be executed once. It's here, this method. 
and second method get data. And you see that it took uh, one millisecond for get data and 10 milliseconds for uncreate. Okay. Do we have any alternatives? Yeah, of course. At all. Actually, at all. Of, uh, actually, a lot of al alternatives. Uh, first of all, trace view. Trace view, this is a great tool provided by, by Google, I believe. Uh, because it comes with Android uh, development tool, so it should be. Uh, also, every decent ID like uh, IntelliJ or Eclipse has really good profilers, and you can also profile it, not automatically like, he uh, like here, because here you basically can collect everything, but actually you can do the same with, with uh, any modern ID. So it's, not, it's, still, it's still not much, I believe. Can we do more? Yeah, of course. Next step we are going to do, imagine that uh, this application actually lists version of, uh, of Android in the order of, uh, of its release. So from Cupcake, from version 1.5 until Jelly Bean or Key Lime Pie, which will be released a little bit later. And imagine that I'd like to sort. I'd like to sort differently than it is sorted here. Well, how can I do this? In similar fashion like I did with profiler, because notice that uh, having uh, a round keyword here, I don't want to introduce aspect-oriented uh, vocabulary here because it could be confusing a little bit, I believe. So, uh, because we have keyword around here, and uh, basically what we do here, we control everything. We control what method is going to collect. What method, actually, I'm sorry. We, we, we control it invocation of the method and also result of the method. And I'd like to check that, okay, I'd like to make my aspect around uh, such method, this string, uh, actually any method which returns array of strings, I collect the result, I collect the result actually, and I sort it. I sort it by, uh, I provide comparator, which actually, sort, which actually sorts it by the length of the string in this list. Let me execute it. Well, you can guess what, what will happen. Now we have uh, sorted strings. Actually, sorted list with, uh, by the length of, of, of the strings. Can we do more? Of course, we always can. Imagine that, that uh, we would like to introduce some delays in our, in our application. We can, for example, simulate that, okay, we have network access, and network access can vary. We, we can get a good, uh, good network, good Wi-Fi, like here, or, or maybe not so much. <coughs> and, uh, and what, uh, what can we do here <coughs> is that having actually the same keyword around, we can introduce delay to certain methods which we are interested in, for example, working with the database, because it's, it is usually slow, and it is hard to simulate delays in such case. And I'm going to execute this, uh, actually not disabler, but delayer. I'm sorry for that. And I'm going to, okay. So I'm going to introduce delay. It's like ugly, the most ugliest delay as it, it could be. And just thread sleep. And I'm going to sleep for, for 10 seconds. So I'm executing my method. I don't see nothing here and if I will click around, I will probably invoke 
a another message, which will actually, yeah, because you know, uh, ANR will will appear if uh, our logic will take more than five seconds on on UI thread. And you notice that we just introduces delays. What else? Next step we can do is that uh, we can actually mess around with this code even more. Imagine that I, I'd like to actually modify a result of, of the method uh, getData, and then I'm going to return just empty string, nothing else. And I'm going to make, make the layer abstract, just not to wait too long. OK, so I just executed it. And I have empty list. OK, now question. Is it really needed? Is it, is it really helpful? Why do we need that? The one reason is for fun or maybe because we can, it's also good reasons, but what about, let, let, what about, let, let me show you, let me show you an example. So, imagine that our application is actually table, just table, which has legs. And uh, if application crashes, or you can just remove one of the legs of the, of the table, it will also crash, right? So, imagine that this is our application. And uh, for this table, if you will remove just one leg, it will be broken. It will not recover or anything like that. Now imagine that we have four legs and we remove just, just one leg. Well, will it uh, be standing? Maybe. <laughs> maybe yes, maybe not. We don't know. It depends on the wind, probably. And imagine that uh, we would like to create application which will, look, which will look like that. And here you can remove actually a lot of legs. It will be standing. And I believe that uh, this testing, which uh, was, was demonstrated before, by introducing delay, delays, by messing around with the code, and we didn't touch any, any, any of, of existing code, will allow us to to identify where our application can crash. Of course, it's not so easy, because notice that if our application, and by metaphor, table has three legs, and if you will remove one leg, it will crash. Does it make sense that it crashes? Yes, of course, because you just remove one of the three legs. And actually, the issue with such testing is how we can identify that that results are meaningful or or are meaningless, which basically means that how we can identify that these results are just noise, and another results are important for us. Which means that imagine we have uh, such table and uh, we can we would like to make a claim. Okay. Even if this table has three legs, it will be standing. It's not true, right? It's not true because it depends where these legs are, are located. Another example, and another example of uh, usage of such approach, like I just demonstrated, is that let's use an, another metaphor and uh, now application, it's not table, but turtle, just turtle. You can just flip it around and it can go back, it can recover, right? And nature created uh, such turtle, this is Indian star turtle, and please notice that shape of the shell is created in the such way that for this turtle, it's no problem to just flip over, absolutely no problem. It takes just seconds. And uh, I believe that that in certain cases, applications uh, shall work like that. If you will push them, and this tool will allow to push your application, it should it shall go, go back, and it shall proceed uh, working. 
Uh, thank you guys. That was really a pleasure to talk here. And if you have any questions, go ahead. Uh, do you mean uh, actual source code or any of the aspects? Okay. And uh, one more thing I'd like to notice here is that what I'm using here. Well, I have only one dependency. It's here. This aspect J uh, jar file. And I had to also modify build process. And build process is defined in, in Eclipse case uh, in uh, dot .project file. And in dot .project file, I had to add such step. It's here. Which basically just employs AspectJ compiler. And also I had to remove Java C build, build step, like I demonstrated in this slide before. And actually, this is only two changes I had to introduce to my uh, simple Android application. Yep. Any more questions? Go ahead. Can you apply this to runtime classes or implications of runtime classes? Yeah. Uh, this is a good question, and uh, this is really attempting, right? that you can modify it. Yeah. Here, the goal of this tool is uh, more like for testing, because like guys before said that uh, aspect J could be black magic, and if you will mess around with, with, with running code in, uh, in production, actually answer to, to your question, yes, you, you can do this, this. And how? Well, imagine that, uh, for example, you define logger here, and this is just simple Java syntax. And imagine that you will introduce simple flag, uh, simple boolean, enable, disable. And then in the runtime, you can, just, uh, you can just set this flag and magically all your application, all your application will start to lock something. But, uh, well, I don't think that we can mess too much with the logging mechanism, but with disabling and stuff, you don't want to disable certain portions, right? Of course, obviously, it's more like for testing. But answer to your question, yes, for testing. But answer to your question, yes, yes, you, you can do this, you can do this. Good question. Yep. Well, um, unfortunately, I don't have any statistics for that. Because this is actually kind of another world, and aspect J and bytecodes, uh, bytecode manipulation, and Android, it's kind of different worlds. So I don't have any statistics. Yeah, actually, aspect J is it uh, is it really old, mature technology? It takes something like it it has maybe ten years or m m maybe more, something like that. So it was used in an, uh, enterprise world. Exactly, exactly. Yes, yes. Actually, Spring framework uses uh, proxy-based uh, uh, aspect J uh, programming, which means basically that you have been and you create proxy of this bin, and having this proxy, you can imagine what you can do with this bin, anything. You can introduce transactions, you can introduce caching, you, you can introduce basically anything. So Spring Framework uses uh, AOP a lot. And also JEE uses interceptors. <coughs> we have just one minute left. Last question. If you, if, you have, I'm sorry, if you have any more questions, just shoot after, after the conference.
And thank you. It was really a pleasure to speak here. Thank you.